Hey everyone, this is Eugene Driscoll with the Valley Independent Sentinel, and I'm here with Tony Spinelli and Jody Mosier. And we're here, did I say your last name correctly? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're here to talk about today's coverage of Team Tate in uh, a podcast form. And the reason I thought maybe we'd chat about it a little today was because uh, I wanted to give people a little insight as to our dilemmas and sort of the ethical challenges and, and, and things we're thinking about as, as the coverage went on today. And I guess we thought yesterday this had sort of ended with uh, the Shelton Headmaster's statement and the James Tate himself sort of saying in Tony's video uh, that this was, was, was coming to an end and that we'd move on. I think that was right, Tony? Was that kind of the... Yeah, impression? it seemed like it was totally over, and they accepted it, and they were ready to move on, and he was ready to play his golf tournament next week, and, and yet the media frenzy continued today. And I guess that was like, you know, we kind of were a part of the media, or at least Jody was, because Jody just wouldn't let this story go. She oh, kept God. saying, I want to be there at the school <laughs> and wait around all day. Yeah. So... <laughs> So what was it like at the school today? I mean, the, the whole thing was like we were getting some uh, criticism on our Facebook group because we were still there, and uh, was there a news value today? I, I don't know. What were your experiences Well, like? I should start by clarifying that. I did not want to be at the school today. I thought I wanted my participation in Team Tate to be over today, but I wanted, I wanted to start working on some other stories. But instead, I went back to the school at about 10, 20, 10, 15, uh, there had been word possibly there was going to be a walkout or a sit-in, and so there was clearly a news value for reporters sort of waiting at the school today because if there was a walkout or there was some sort of protest, uh, we should have been there to cover it. But nothing ended up happening. I guess students, based on what students coming out were saying, is a couple students kind of got in, sat down in the, in the lobby. They were dismissed early, and everyone else went back to class. So what ended up happening at, at the scene, you know, there's maybe 12 uh, news vans parked along the front of the school. Students would be dismissed early for like a dentist appointment and maybe, you know, you'd get 15 reporters, big uh, national chains with their big cameras, just crowding around these students trying to like walk home to go get their teeth cleaned or whatever and just hammering away. What's happening in there? Was there a sit-in? You know, did anyone get in trouble? And these students are sort of put on the spot. They're saying, oh, you know, it was, you know, a couple students, whatever. Um, at that point, I started feeling like this is over. You know, we're creating the news now because we're hammering away at these students. And and which was, I mean, my sort of dilemma, I got up uh, this morning, kind of thought maybe this was over. And then, uh, you know, various media outlets were reporting. And we had heard, too, that there was either going to be a sit-in, a walkout, and blah, blah, blah. But my, my gut feeling this morning was like, well, okay, maybe now this is the point where this is turning into sort of a spectacle uh, generated by the media. You know, I think over the last, over yesterday, last night, maybe we, and by we, I mean the, the media, were relying on uh, statements from like a 14-year-old kid coming out of there saying, yeah, there's going to be a sit-in. It's yeah. going to be great. Whether, whether that was going to, it was almost as if the, the, the one kid saying that, then everybody in the media picking it up and repeating it made it happen. So it, I felt like, all right, what do we do now? Do we just ignore it? And I wanted to. I thought, okay, let, let's move on. It's done. But then I thought, well, what about these kids who feel like they've been slighted, uh, whether you agree with the decision that was made by Shelton Schools or not? For us just not to show up today and keep an eye on what was going on in the school, I felt like it would be a disservice to uh, the, uh, the students because they're readers and, and have rights and people like, like anybody else. So that was my decision to send, uh, to have you go again. Mm -hmm. How angry were you when I said you had to go? Um, I wasn't angry. I was just, I was trying to set up appointments to do other stories today. So I kind of felt... Um, just frustrated that, okay, again, I'm going to focus all my energy on this this one story instead of reporting other news, which, you know, I ended up leaving and doing doing my other interviews for these other stories, so it worked out, but I thought, if I don't get to do these other interviews, I'm going to scream, because all I want to do is write these other stories, and, you know, just sort of move on and, and get on with the coverage that I think is important, too, 
Um, I don't think I don't think this coverage was unimportant. I just also wanted to do other local news. You know. I think one thing that was sort of happening. Uh, you were at the scene. Tony and I are here in the office. Uh, when we started to do little updates on Facebook as to what was happening, you could feel the readers, some readers starting to say, enough's enough, which is sort of a, the good thing about social media. I started to sense like, uh-oh, maybe we're starting to exploit this. And tried to be honest with people, uh, you know, even on our Facebook uh, group and, you know, tried to deal with it that way. But I thought that was, uh, was interesting that our readers seemed to be turning on us a little. But that being said, you know, the whole Catch-22 with a story like this, people start to say they don't want to read it, they don't want to read it, and yet every time we put something on Facebook about it, there's 18 comments about it. Right. People cannot or could not stop talking about this. Uh, in terms of our page views today, you know, I'm bringing that up on my super-duper laptop on this other machine. I mean, you know, our, our top ten stories, our number one story today was uh, his appearance on Kimmel the other night that we wrote up. A number two story today is we interviewed a, uh, a freelance marketing guy in Florida to describe or to kind of dissect how the Shelton School District handled this from a PR advantage. Number three, Shelton's Teen Tate uh, inspiration says he's ready to move on. That was the one with Tony's video. And then, oh, suddenly this is new. Number four is uh, Oxford Company releases Rambama. <laughs> so apparently people still want to read about uh, us killing Bin Laden. But, but after that, you know, it's, uh, it's Team Tate's story. After that, it's an old story with Sonali Rodriguez. People are searching her on Google. And after that, it's our Team Tate action figure story, which I thought was our one uh, blatant attempt to milk the story by... Uh, <laughs> That was totally not news, but we just wanted to put the kid's head on a He-Man doll. <laughs> so, Tony, when you were waiting there yesterday for the uh, parents to yeah, come out... Yeah, it was a long wait. I was kind of, I was impressed by, uh, the parents are just, they, they're very uh, uh, composed uh, people. Like they, yes, they, they explained to me that the mom, I guess, is some kind of local historian... And she's a member of, I think, the Shelton uh, Historical Trails. Society or... or the Conservation the, Commission. The she's dad on the, is, I heard. Yeah, the oh, okay, dad is on the Conservation Commission. So she had some experience with handling the press. But probably... Not I, like this. Probably though. not like this. Though, I mean, right? probably at not what like point does the Today Show come talk about, you know... Right, but she was able to take her experiences from the Historical Society, I believe she's with, and... Uh, extrapolate that and make it into what she needed last night and she had a friend of hers from the neighborhood uh, go out and meet the press and organize us all and bring us into the backyard and call her out so she they was, they did a better job of managing public relations in the press than actually the school district did I yeah, not to yeah get because we to... waited for the school officials to come out and there were at least 20 or 25 reporters and photographers and videographers outside of the school, and when they came out, they just hit hard. I mean, they, they didn't say hello, they didn't open up with a joke like politicians and even, you know, town officials usually do. They just jumped right in. That was a weird vibe. The only yeah. thing I could compare that to is when they executed Michael Ross a few years ago. I covered that up in Enfield when they did the press conference afterward to say they had just killed the man. It was that kind of vibe. Wow. At, uh, at yeah. Shelton, where it was just so serious. I mean, and then they turned and, the big and walked scheme of in, things, and the doors were locked. Right. It, so you couldn't even go in and ask a question. Which, which kind of the, the PR guy in our in the story we posted today, and which also a reader said we're, we're milking the story with that story, but he kind of contrasted that, where you have the Tate family just being more human. Right. The Tate family was very human. They handled it so well, and young James showed a lot of maturity, like his dad said. And the way he handled all the media, he really did. And, and uh, the family deserves a lot of credit for the way they've stood up in all of this. And then uh, the other thing that is probably important to point out, you know, Dr. Beth Smith, when we launched, I mean, we've been around less than two years, she was probably the first school official to, without questions asked, other than who we were, to, to, to give us uh, information to send out press releases. I mean... I feel personally uh, sorry for her 
that uh, you know the story's turned and that there's people really attacking her and, and going after her personally mm -hmm. uh, all over the web, uh, which I just it's just not fair. I mean, you know, she does a good job from what we've seen up there at Shelton High School, and this was a one of those once in a lifetime bizarre incidents. But you know, she's the one that sends out press releases when uh, uh, the robotics club is doing something good. If uh, you know the, the, the Shelton kids uh, having their experiment uh, on the space shuttle, uh, you know she's really good about that. And she's welcome us into the school. Like she's not the kind of principal that says, "Talk to me after school." Like she's welcome us in. She takes her calls. She returns right. calls. She returns which, calls. I mean, there's principals yeah. here in the valley that we've never even talked to because. Uh, it's a different vibe. We'll see if that changes now. You know, I, I can't say I'd, uh, I have to I'd say, blame her if, if she I'm, doesn't talk to the press anymore after this because she's been pretty well, you know, yeah. burned. But yesterday when she came out to tell the press there was going to be a press conference, it was different. She wasn't so guarded. She was friendly. She was warm. You know, she was talkative. But she was saying, I'm not saying anything now. There will be a statement later. I think her change of appearance had to do more with the pressure that she was under right then because she knew everyone would be watching they'd be live broadcasting what she was saying i'm sure she was just nervous you know what i mean mm. okay and we're just about out of time to get this thing up but one last thing i wanted to uh, touch on for like 30 seconds is who are these uh, reporters from the city showing up in limos today you mentioned um i don't know which reporters but there was a limo dr mel new, new jersey plates on it okay and uh one with Ernie yeah. Anastas. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I think it was the uh, Today Wolf. Show. <laughs> I think it was a reporter from the Today Show was there. She was doing a stand-up at like 12 o'clock. Must be nice. All right, that's all we got. We don't even know if this is going to work. Peace out. Mm -hmm.